Hate is a subject I seem to be talking about a lot in my video, something I noticed when I looked up on my YouTube channel. I have several videos over the past few months that have hate in the title, and for good reason, because hate is divisive. Hate tears people apart. Hate brings people at odds. Hate is destructive. Hate could ultimately lead to the downfall of our species if we allow it to do so. Now, since the horrendous murders at that church in Charleston, South Carolina, there have been several things that have transpired. First off, there was kind of a watershed moment, I thought, which I believed, I hoped was going to be the case, where the governor of South Carolina and several other southern states started pushing to have the Confederate battle flag pulled off of state government property. Now, we'll get into the whole various points of view regarding that flag in a moment, but the point is, it has been tainted, it has been twisted and manipulated by white supremacist hate groups over the decades into a symbol of bigotry, racism, and hate. In other words, the battle flag really has no place on government property. Since the government is supposed to represent we the people, all the people of the United States, white Americans, black Americans, etc. Now, in reaction to the battle flag being pulled from government property across the South, there has been basically Confederate heritage, not hate, protests that have gone on throughout several states. And to counter that protest, there are also anti-battle flag groups showing up as well. And several of these protests have gotten a little heated. Now, look, I respect everybody's right to freedom of speech. That's one of the things guaranteed in the First Amendment. Whether you agree with somebody, or disagree with somebody, that is not the point. If we were to start censoring this group because we disagreed with this group's views and opinions on something, then where would it end? Because we start with them, then we censor this group, then we censor that group, and before you know it, we might as well just scrap the Bill of Rights. Now, in response to the tragedy in Charleston, there has also been reaction as well by the NAACP and several others wanting to do a lot more, way more, than take down the battle flag. Now, the battle flag is, unfortunately, as I mentioned, to become a symbol of hatred and racism. I think that it should be off government property. Now, if you want to wave it on private property, which we'll get into in a moment, that is just fine and dandy. But you have these organizations, these groups, these people out there that want to go too far, in my honest opinion, by removing Confederate monuments and landmarks throughout the country. I take serious issue with this because those landmarks are part of our history. And the history is not kind. History is not all rose-colored glasses. There's good parts to our history, and there's also bad parts to our history. And in order for us to fully respect American history and learn from it in order to hopefully do better down the road, the last thing we want to do is start sandblasting or dynamiting or bulldozing monuments and landmarks that we happen to disagree with. Because like with a free speech issue, where does that end? Now back to the private property issue concerning the battle flag. This is something I discussed a little bit in last week's video, My America. Now, I do not have an issue with people that choose to wave the Confederate battle flag on their own private property or on their person or on their vehicle. However, there are individuals out there that have started this viral movement, thanks largely to social media, to go off on someone's property and rip down their battle flag, trespassing and stealing our crimes. Not only that, it sets a dangerous precedent because eventually you're going to come across one of these homeowners that is not going to taste too kindly to somebody pulling up to their property, running up on their property, basically trespassing and stealing something that they bought and paid for, whether you agree with it or not, they're going to come out and there's going to be some serious trouble, which could result in jail time if they're caught, somebody being seriously injured or killed, and if that happens, it's only going to make this situation worse. Now, speaking of going from bad to worse, this weekend in South Carolina, there is going to be a protest that I'm kind of concerned about. You have the KKK showing up to the capital of South Carolina, and you also have the new Black Panthers. They're going to be there as well. Now, what we have here is the makings 
of a perfect storm because these are two very well-known hate groups, white supremacist groups and black supremacist groups together protesting each other. I don't exactly see this quote-unquote protest between these two hate groups ending in a big old powwow and hug out and people just crying and putting down the hatred and coming to the realization that we're all human beings. Yeah, I don't see that happening. Now, to break it down for you, I've put everybody into basically six groups, six categories. Now, in the middle, you have two groups, the people that really don't care or have no opinion about this issue. Then, of course, you have those that simply just want the battle flag removed from government property because it's a symbol of hatred. Then, if you go over slightly to the right, you have what some call the neo-confederates, those that believe in heritage, not hate. They're not necessarily racist, but they see the confederacy in a different light than others. Obviously, they don't see the Civil War or the rise of the confederacy as all about slavery. That opinion does vary a little bit. Some of them recognize that slavery was an issue that should have never happened. Of course, we're looking at it from a you know, Monday quarterback point of view. We all are against slavery. Well, at least most of us, right? But at the same time, this was a different time period in our history. And unfortunately, yes, slavery was part of the issue, along with terrorists, along with northern aggression. It all combines into one big giant issue concerning the secession of states and the Civil War. I like to believe that we can find the truth regarding that issue in the middle, not over there from the left's point of view or from the right's point of view, but in the middle. A quick example would be that General Lee did not join the South because of the slavery issue. In fact, he freed the slaves that he inherited before the war started, before he joined the South. And a lot of those soldiers that fought for the South, they might have been racist, I don't know. But the majority of them were poor. They owned no slaves. Their motivations for fighting the Union was to protect their homes, the southern states, which were being invaded by the North. Now, the wealthy white slave owners in the South that controlled the government, that's probably a different story. So we have the heritage, not hate, neo-Confederates, which I would say hopefully most of them are not necessarily racist or pro-slavery. They just wave the flag for Southern pride and in remembrance of the the men and women who died in the Civil War fighting for the South. Now, to the extreme right, we have white supremacist hate groups like the KKK, the neo-Nazis, etc., that want a race war. They believe that the white man is superior to everybody else and that everyone else should be uh, in service to the white man are simply wiped out. Now we move over to the other two groups. The first group is those that want to do a lot more than pull down the battle flag from government property. They want to go in and sandblast, dynamite, bulldoze, remove Confederate monuments and landmarks. Basically, you know, doing away with that part of our history, whether you agree or disagree with it. They obviously see the Civil War and the Confederacy as about one singular issue, slavery, which was not entirely true, but at the same time was not entirely false. Like I mentioned, the truth can be found somewhere in the middle. Now, I'd like to believe that this is not going to happen. Well, hopefully not in our lives, the removal of Confederate monuments and landmarks, because as I pointed out, it's part of our history. And to do so would cause a very bad reaction on the other side with those that are very pro-South, very pro-Confederacy, that are not necessarily in the uh, racist hatred category, but in the other group, heritage, not hate. Destroying these landmarks and monuments would be a very, very dangerous move, especially with the uh, atmosphere, the climate that we currently have in this country. It would just exacerbate the situation. And there's obviously a lot of people that would have a serious problem with these monuments being bulldozed, sandblasted, torn down, and completely removed. I have serious issue with that, and I equate it to, say, a book burning. It's information in those books you may not agree with, or there may be some bad stuff in some of these books, but there's also good stuff in those books, and good information in those books, and to start burning books or knocking down monuments and sandblasting them or dynamiting them is a very, very bad idea. Now, the sixth and final group is the extreme opposite to the white supremacist group, the black supremacist hate groups out there, like the New Black Panthers, the Nation of Islam, etc., 
their views are kind of like the exact opposite of the white supremacists. They see themselves as the superior race. They see everyone else as second-class citizens who should either be segregated from them or you know, put below them or simply exterminated. Now, fortunately, those two extremist factions, the black and white supremacists, I believe, at least I hope to believe, that they're still a minority compared to all these other groups that I mentioned. And I also hope that the majority is still somewhere in the middle with those that don't care or have no opinion or those of us who simply just want the battle flag removed from government property while at the same time respecting everyone else's individual private property rights. When Dylan Roof murdered those innocent people in that church in South Carolina, his vision was to spark a race war. Now, recognize most of you don't have that extremist point of view one way or the other. You're somewhere in the middle in one of these four other groups. Let me ask you this. Do you really want a race war? Do you want it to come down to that? Brothers against brothers. Humanity tearing itself apart. Americans at each other's throats. If there is a race war or a new civil war in this country, which could very well be racially motivated, it will not end well. It will not be pretty. It will be 10 times, probably even 100 times worse than the first American Civil War. By the way, that war ended with most of the southern cities leveled and over 600,000 people dead. This is a sequel we do not want. Unlike Terminator 2 and The Empire Strikes Back, this is a very, very bad idea for a sequel. Mainly because I foresee several factions rising up. Obviously, the hate groups, and there's more than just white and black. There's also Hispanic hate groups and others as well. Muslim extremists out there. Then, of course, you're going to have the government on one side and anarchy. You're going to have destruction. You're going to have death. A lot of innocent men, women, and children caught in the middle. And once again, you're going to see cities leveled. Not just in the South, but all over the nation. North, South, East, West. The everyday things that most of you take for granted, like uh, food, running water, electricity, air conditioning, Starbucks, Netflix, not to mention uh, medical supplies and toiletries, hygiene products, will be very, very hard to come by. And whatever the outcome of a race war is going to be, it's not going to be for the better of us all, because the truth is... There's going to be a lot of people dead, hundreds of thousands of Americans, and maybe more, most likely millions dead from either fighting or uh, famine or disease or simply being massacred by this hate group or that hate group. And it could very well turn people that are not racists into racists because you're going to have your family murdered by another group of people that hated them simply because of the pigment of their skin. The result is not only going to be death and destruction, but it's also going to be hate spreading like a cancer. I, for one, have no desire to see that happen. Now, I don't claim to have any solutions or any brilliant ideas or a silver bullet that could somehow make everybody realize that we are actually members of the same species, as I've pointed out time and time again. But I do think that it starts with individuals, you and me, making choices to love instead of hate treating each other as human beings who have rights and individuality and judging each other on those characteristics, on those traits, on our deeds and our content. Because yes, there are good white people. There are good black people and there are bad black people and bad white people and good and bad of everybody else. But despite all the bad stuff going on here in America and throughout the rest of the world, because there's plenty of atrocities going on, I still have to believe in my heart that the majority of humanity are good. And if I'm wrong, eventually the cats will inherit the earth.